Hi, it's Clemmie from the NARM Clinic, and this week I'm talking all things calprotectin. So what is calprotectin, what is it used for, and why is it useful in inflammatory bowel disease? So put simply, um, fecal is poo, and calprotectin is a protein that's found in our poo when there's inflammation in our intestines. So that's what fecal calprotectin quite simply means. So when there's inflammation in our intestines, white blood cells called neutrophils, which are part of our immune system, move to the site of that inflammation and they release this protein, this calprotectin, which then um, it moves through and is excreted and shows up in our poo. Now generally, the more inflammation that's in our intestine, um, the higher the calprotectin reading will be. So when is calprotectin testing used? So um, it can be really useful in helping um, your GP to work out whether you might have an inflammatory bowel condition like Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, or a bacterial infection or a parasitic infection or potentially cancer in the colon or a non-inflammatory bowel condition like IBS or a viral infection. So the symptoms of these two, so inflammatory bowel conditions and non-inflammatory bowel conditions, can be quite similar, but the two are very, very different conditions and will be treated very differently. Um, now, calprotectin is raised in um, inflammatory bowel conditions like Crohn's and colitis, but is not raised in non-inflammatory conditions like IBS, so irritable bowel syndrome. And as I said, this can really help to guide your GP in terms of the right care paths um, for you and also to prevent any unnecessary investigations uh, like endoscopy. So cameras that are put inside your digestive system to see what's going on. Um, calprotectin testing can help avoid that if they don't think it's necessary. So why is um, calprotectin useful in um, inflammatory bowel disease after diagnosis? So it can be a really useful tool um, to monitor what's going on inside. So to monitor treatment progress and disease progress in Crohn's and colitis. Um, it helps to give us an insight as to what's going on inside, um, whether things are healing, and also it might um, be able to give us an indication of potential relapse risk, so flare risk. Now, research has shown that raised calprotectin levels can help to predict whether someone with Crohn's or colitis might be, having a, might be about to have a flare or have a flare in the near future. So there's some specific research that's been done in patients with inflammatory bowel disease in remission with no symptoms, and it showed that 90% of those patients with high fecal calprotectin levels actually relapsed within a year, whilst only 10% of those with lower calprotectin levels um, relapsed within that year period as well. Now, the difficulty with that is, is that we don't have a distinctive cutoff value between high and low calprotectin levels when we're looking at flare and or relapse risk. Um, now, some uh, suggest a cutoff point of 250, um, but others suggest a lower cutoff point. So it really depends on um, the different gastroenterologist you're working with. So what does raised calprotectin mean? So if the result um, that you get back shows raised fecal calprotectin, this means that there's inflammation somewhere in the intestines, um, but it can't tell us where that inflammation actually is and what's causing it. Um, and that is where endoscopies, colonoscopies and sigmoidoscopies, so those are um, camera investigations in our intestines, um, can be useful to determine what's actually going on and what might be causing that. And um, I've also put together a table um, for, which is in the blog that accompanies this video, um, which shows the different values of calprotectin and what they mean and what might happen um, when you get those readings if you don't have a diagnosis, um, but you're having test results or you're having tests done with your GP. Um, now, these are based on the NICE guidelines, so they're the um, guidelines the NHS use. So if you're in that process of um, having not been diagnosed and you're not sure, it can be useful to have a look at that so that you have an idea of what might happen. Uh, so I put that together and I hope that helps and we'll see you again soon.